I think people look at their own business and say things actually look better. People look at uh, the forecast for inflation and things look better than they looked a, little, uh, a while ago. But then people sort of look around them at the world and they become pessimistic. And I think the psychology that's playing there is that there are things that are happening now which people can't really understand completely and are unpredictable. And there is a difference between uncertainty when you can pretty much, based on the past, have a prediction of how it might go versus things that are really a discontinuity where nothing in history can give you any feeling from what might happen. So an example of the first could be, will there be a recession next year? Yeah. There are many opinions, but we have history to guide us in that. An example of the latter, of discontinuity, is, um, well, it was the war. Yeah. Uh, will there be an atomic conflict? Will China invade Taiwan, and if so, when and how? Mm -hmm. So it's on people's minds, but they have no ability to figure this mm -hmm. out. And because there are so many geopolitical things that are coming at people now, mm -hmm. uh, it feels different than just the economic uh, discontinuities. So if you think back to 2008, when we had major disruption, it was a time where everybody came together. Uh, you know, countries cooperated. It was a win-win for people to get over that. When you have geopolitical uh, discontinuities, it's a zero sum. And people don't know how to navigate those. Plus, they don't come as often. We've had almost 30 years without that. Or if you really want to take a long perspective, 70 years. So these are very, uh, they make it very uneasy. So I understand where this comes from. Really interesting framing. And of course, the title of this year's conference is Cooperation in a Fragmented World. So that's where the fragmentation is coming from. Mm -hmm. I've been speaking to various businesses uh, the last couple of days, and it feels to me that one of the topics that's top of mind is the issue of supply chain management. It, it's really come to the fore, especially throughout the course of the pandemic. We were all talking about how shipping and, and uh, all of these input costs had seized up, a lot of bottlenecks in the system, and many companies thought, okay, let me reevaluate my own supply chain. Mm -hmm. How can I make it more efficient? How can I be more resilient to future shocks? What are you hearing on that front? And also, what do you think about the phenomenon, phenomenon of onshoring that, that seems to be uh, the, the, the jargon word that it people is. are using it now? Is. Well, you're hearing an awful lot of that, I think, for two reasons. One is companies really got stuck, the pandemic, and then also the war, which uh, with energy supply chain and food supply chain, et cetera. Um, but you also hear governments talking like that. So you have both forces coming together uh, on that. Um, in quite a number of the sessions I attended in the last couple of days, there are people who absolutely, there are people who absolutely say, we have got to do that. We don't have any other option. We can't afford not to do that. Plus our governments are really encouraging us to do it and we have incentives to do that. And then there are people who are saying, well, if you had one big um, factory in China, why don't you think about building 10 factories in Asia in different places and hedge that way? You can still get lower cost labor and you won't be dependent on one place. So it's better than just onshoring, but it is definitely a uh, looking at a more resilient supply chain than what we've had now. Yeah.